for the invitation to uh, speak at really a lovely venue here. Uh, so I'm going to try and be as inclusive as possible. I'm going to uh, uh, talk about the Caribbean uh, uh, in general. Uh, at some points, I will be a little bit Jamaica-centric. Uh, that's where I live and work. Um, I will try to point that out uh, uh, when I, I do. So uh, the Caribbean region is a uh, quite diverse region. There are a lot of countries within the region, 28 countries, mostly small island developing countries, uh, great diversity in terms of, of the geography. You can see up in the uh, top right, the Grand Cayman, very, very flat. So you have uh, ones that are quite mountainous, Dominica, um, uh, as well as Jamaica. Uh, ones that have many islands like Bahamas, uh, which can pose their own problems for uh, public health. And we have lots of different uh, languages, though uh, there are two dominant languages, really English, the English-speaking Caribbean and the Spanish-speaking Caribbean, but also French. Uh, Dutch and Creole in some regions. Uh, the overall population is about 42 million in the region, uh, and this obviously varies uh, quite substantially depending on where you are. The largest country in the region, uh, 11 and a half million Cuba, all the way down to the smallest country, Montserrat, about 5,000 people only. Um, there is examples of unity throughout the, the region. Uh, the Caribbean community, or CARICOM, sort of gives a voice, uh, one singular voice to the region. That is based uh, in Guyana, the headquarters. Uh, which you can see uh, down here. Uh, CARFA is, uh, speaking from the English-speaking uh, Caribbean side, it's the Caribbean Public Health Agency uh, and serves as an important reference laboratory, especially for some of the very small islands that have very limited testing capabilities, and that is in Trinidad and Tobago. And, of course, the University of the West Indies, um, which is going to serve the English-speaking Caribbean, uh, Jamaica is a major campus, and then uh, major campuses as well in Trinidad and Barbados and some other smaller campuses as well. Uh, the Caribbean, importantly, the economy is heavily, heavily de uh, tourist dependent. Uh, and uh, this can really be greatly impacted with things like hurricanes, uh, which can really drive people into poverty, which can play into the HIV epidemic, as well as global downturns, um, the mo like the most recent one, can really uh, bring people uh, into poverty. And poverty uh, already is a quite a bit of it uh, within the region. So here you can see some examples of, uh, and there's quite a bit of in a major inequality within the region uh, for most islands, but not all. And you can see some examples of, here's a person that basically has nothing, probably living in a squatter community right by a gully over here. Um, and you can see she's doing her laundry. Um, basically ideal breeding grounds for um, mosquito-borne disease and uh, things like this, uh, good reasons why mosquito-borne diseases can really tear through um, these countries very quickly. Um, and there is on the other side uh, lots of money in, in some places. So here you can see this is in the north coast, a villa um, in Montego Bay. This is actually for sale. It's on the market for $10 million if anyone's interested, U.S. dollars. Um, and religion is really very deeply ingrained in the, in the um, uh, region. And it is predominantly by far and away um, Christian. So for example, uh, the Ministry of, of Health will start their meetings with, with a prayer. And even in some, uh, some places, uh, in the University of West Indies, sometimes that will happen as well. And this religion actually can also feed into um, the HIV epidemic, uh, the topic here, which is the second highest regional um, prevalence behind Sub-Saharan Africa. So here's just a look at the, just some select countries um, of HIV uh, prevalence. Of course, there's great variety in the size of the countries. Overall, there's about 310,000 people living with HIV with an adult HIV prevalence overall of about 1.2%, but we can see that this uh, can vary all the way to the low end of Cuba, 0.4% to the high end, uh, Bahamas, uh, Haiti, Jamaica, on the higher end at about 1.8, 1.9%. Uh, um, overall, the art coverage is 57%, uh, certainly uh, nowhere near how high we would like in the international targets, and you can see that this can uh, vary uh, quite a bit between countries, and you can see some of these countries not doing so well, Belize, uh, Jamaica included, doing very uh, poorly, and I will talk about this a little bit more uh, later. In terms of new HIV infections and AIDS deaths in the Caribbean, um, this really decreased only with the widespread access of ARBs, which really wasn't present until money started coming in through Global Fund, PEPFAR, early 2000s, about where this money started coming in, and then we see a decrease in new HIV infections and subsequently AIDS-related deaths. 
an AIDS-related death uh, from, uh, in Jamaica in the adult population, uh, 15 to 49, I should say, uh, is still the leading cause of deaths as AIDS. Uh, the mode of transmission in the Caribbean is really has features of a general heterosexual epidemic, but also, also some concentrated epidemics, uh, which are importantly going to be uh, MSM and sex workers are re really going to be the major key subpopulations. Uh, so you can see here, these are um, all sex worker related over here, men who have sex with men, and basically the rest of the population. You'll also note, uh, I think this is uh, people who inject drugs. This is a very, very minuscule and basically is not present. Um, this really doesn't happen in the Caribbean. Exceptions really being Puerto Rico and Bermuda uh, are the only ones that really have any sort of substantial injecting drug use. Um, predominantly, by far and away, it's a heterosexual epidemic, uh, with the exception really of Cuba, it's mostly uh, MSM. And the key subpopulations, as I mentioned, are MSM and sub, sub, uh, sex workers. Drug users, really not as big of a deal. Um, outside of injecting drug use, really this would be uh, crack cocaine, uh, really sort of a very small um, subpopulation. So really the major keys are going to be MSM and sex workers, which I will talk a little bit more about. So here we can see um, some key subpopulations, are the female sex workers. Um, and we can see uh, a number of different countries, their relative, their HIV prevalences. And you can see, uh, as you might expect, some of them are quite high. You can see Haiti, 8.7%, Guyana above five, and Jamaica around 4.5. Um, I will say that this, this, uh, the Jamaica data is getting a little bit old and it has, there's been great progress there. Uh, and this is down to about 2% now. In terms of female sex workers, so I will go into Jamaica-centric uh, mode. Um, the message is, is getting out and the usage of condoms is very good for the most part with the last uh, client. The major issue is that there's unprotected sex with a non-paying sort of main partner, all right? And the last survey, it was only about 30% were using a condom with sort of this, this main non-paying partner. Uh, most know their status, and as you might guess, um, STIs really are going to be uh, uh, very widespread in this population, but also just in general within the Caribbean, uh, STIs are going to be pretty rampant. So you can see about a 25% trichomonas vaginalis uh, infections with female street workers, 15% chlamydia, 10% gonorrhea. And as I mentioned, the prevalence has um, gone down in Jamaica from 9% in 2005 all the way to 2% 2 in 2017. Now, um, the other key population, and this is really an important population, is uh, men who have sex with men in the Caribbean. Although this can vary, you can see overall, this is a very high HIV prevalence uh, um, population, subpopulation. And of course, uh, the region is very uh, well known for its stigma and discrimination, unfortunately, uh, which really are uh, fueling these, these high numbers. So you can see these are really just unacceptably high, about a third of MSM infected with HIV in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and very high in others as well. And despite that, so I will again go Jamaica-centric, 88% um, of men who have sex with men are not always using a condom. About 15% also have an STI other than HIV. And if we look at specific MSM transgender, uh, the HIV prevalence is all the way at 53%. And despite all of these massive numbers, 58% indicated they had little or no chance of getting HIV. <coughs> and importantly, if you see there, HIV positive MSM, 60% of them are not disclosing their status to their partner. And importantly, many uh, of the um, MSM are bisexual, about half. And this is a bridge really into the heterosexual uh, community. So uh, the factors really driving the HIV epidemic, there are uh, high risk factors within heterosexual men. And really multiple partners is going to be a major, major issue in the Caribbean region. Um, the last survey in Jamaica, about 50% um, of men surveyed, this was a national survey, indicated more than one sex partner within the year. Transactional sex also unfortunately going to be quite common. All right, in Jamaica, I think this was about 20% uh, of men indicated that transactional sex, meaning they're either paying directly or they're uh, buying something or giving something uh, a favor uh, to the person, usually a very disadvantaged, very poor uh, uh, woman. Uh, so transactional sex, unfortunately, very common. About 20% in Jamaica indicated that that was happening. 
Uh, unprotected sex, of course, with sex workers, another high risk behavior for heterosexual men. And then the high rates of, of um, HIV and MSM due to unprotected anal intercourse with multiple partners. Again, that's a common theme throughout the Caribbean, multiple partners, really regardless uh, uh, of your sexuality. And as I mentioned, the high rates of bisexuality with, uh, among MSM that really bridges this into uh, the wider heterosexual community. As I said, high, high rates of STIs in general within the Caribbean region as a whole. And then most men are not circumcised, which of course compared to circumcised men increases your risk of acquiring HIV. So I will just uh, now mention, I'll just kind of talk uh, briefly about, um, certainly not going into much detail, the testing strategy and the, and the care continuum just very briefly. Um, I will speak for uh, Jamaica, but this is going to, for the most part, going to be common throughout the region. Testing and diagnosis is primarily going to be through a rapid diagnostic test. Uh, frequently, this is going to be the HIV determined. And this is really due to cost as well as time. So these are subsidized greatly uh, by things like the Global Fund. Uh, fourth generation tests are available. So for example, in Jamaica, they, there is an Abbott Architect um, chemiluminescent machine, both in the public health lab as well as the virology lab, but really not widely um, used basically because of cost. Uh, in the virology laboratory at the university, it is used for antenatal testing. In terms of the rest of sort of the continuum, care continuum, uh, so you can see uh, I've tried to put um, the past years, 2016, and then the most recent data, 2017, on top of it. Uh, certainly have a ways to go to reaching those 90-90 targets, so the hatch marks are those uh, that we need to get to. And so we can see that we've gone up from 64% to 73% in the region know their status. And then importantly, this is a major uh, a gap here. Uh, we've gone to 57% art coverage. Certainly we can do much better than that, uh, but this has gone up from 52%. And finally, people living with HIV who are virally suppressed, 34% in 2016, and this has gone up to 40%. All right, so we can see these last two steps really, um, we're really uh, dropping the ball there and need to do some additional work, although we are seeing the numbers getting better. And this is just to break down for all of those countries that have the data. Um, I just selected some of these countries and you can see um, really the first step, uh, being aware of HIV status is pretty good, but subsequent steps there is quite a bit of fall off. You'll notice Jamaica, there is a massive fall off. And this is basically really a, a poor linkage to care and retention to care, unfortunately. Uh, and this is really the reason why PEPFAR has actually chosen to pull out of other Caribbean countries like Barbados. It was actually the, where they were located, the regional headquarters in Barbados. And they basically moved physically to uh, Jamaica now to try and uh, address these two steps right here. So they've invested a lot of that money that they've taken out of some of the richer countries like Trinidad and Barbados and moved into uh, Jamaica. Antiretroviral therapy, as I mentioned, about 57% ART coverage in the region. Uh, this is just to show you, this is Jamaica's um, ARB treatment guidelines. Uh, of course, um, older ARVs compared to developed countries. Um, importantly, there's discussion about possibly moving in 2019 to um, dolutegravir uh, as a first line, but that's still uh, sort of in progress. Test and treat, um, really when these recommendations come out, uh, Caribbean is usually kind of slow in general to, uh, to, to follow. And so really implementation of test and treat for Jamaica, that really just occurred in January of 2018. Of course, that comes with an additional cost uh, be, uh, with treating all these additional uh, uh, people. Adherence is a major issue uh, in many places within the region. And this can be due to social status. You don't have money. Uh, you don't have the ability to get your drugs physically to get there. Uh, or even to um, pay someone to get there. Um, they're also for drugs that you need to take with meals. These are people that have irregular meal patterns and sometimes they will miss their doses. And of course, there's widespread stigma uh, of, of HIV, the disease itself, and so people don't want the other people seeing them taking their uh, pills. Uh, resistance, uh, really there's not much uh, that has been done. Um, there's a preliminary study right now that uh, is just about wrapping up and it looks like the um, drug naive transmitted drug resistance is about 10% in Jamaica and this is mostly the NNRTIs. 
um, the cost of HIV antiretroviral uh, therapy is free to the, the public. And of course, the newer uh, drugs, the issue is really the cost uh, barrier uh, in paying for these. PrEP is starting to get implemented um, within Jamaica. There is a pilot that is going to be assessed in 2019 to look at PrEP. In terms of pediatrics, um, there has been a great increase in ARB coverage. So you can see right here as the region overall and the great decrease in mother to child transmission. All right, a little bit of blip here. I'm not sure if this is just sort of complacency. I know that Jamaica, this has basically continued to go up uh, and is above 95% and right around the 2% uh, threshold in mother to child transmission. But overall, uh, from 2000, there's been uh, compared to 2017, a 70% decrease in new children that have been um, infected. And so I'm just listing uh, some of the countries, select countries, and you can see this is a really a major strong point within uh, the region. Seven countries have achieved mother-to-child transmission elimination status, which you can see on the top. And you can see um, Jamaica doing quite well here in the Dominican Republic and some others that uh, need to um, step up a little bit. So the challenges, um, where to begin? There are so many uh, challenges in the Caribbean region. I mentioned the art adherence is very poor in general. There is widespread um, stigma and discrimination. This is not only within the general public, but finds its way, unfortunately, into the health sector. All right, so it's really deeply ingrained uh, in many of these countries within the culture. The cost of the epidemic, of course, is a, a major uh, challenge for countries that are very resource limited. Uh, unfortunately, there's also high turnover of clinical staff and really limited HIV specialty training. Prevention um, has, was doing well in Jamaica, but it seems that it's kind of fallen off. Um, and uh, it really seems that that message is being lost uh, with the youth most recently, in, at least in Jamaica. Sexual behavior, I mentioned multiple uh, partners is really going to be one of the major challenges within the region. It's so widespread and so common. And then research funding, while there is some, uh, it is definitely very highly limited uh, through either the government uh, or there is some money available regionally sometimes, but usually to do something major, a large-scale study is going to, for the most part, require an international uh, partner. So some work that is going on, certainly this is an all-encompassing uh, current work. As I had mentioned, there is someone that's finishing up the ARB resistance within Jamaica. We had uh, recently started looking at uh, gonorrhea and antimicrobial resistance, which has not been really assessed in probably decades, um, no published work on it. Uh, planned work, so I'd mentioned PrEP, um, as well as we want to look at uh, within people living with HIV, asymptomatic STI, which we think are going to be very important for uh, the spread of the virus uh, in Jamaica and in the Caribbean as a whole. And we want to start looking at comorbid um, disease. So it's really nothing has been assessed there in the Caribbean. And just as a start, just look at a survey, what's happening uh, with these, these markers of cardiovascular disease, lipids, sugars, et cetera, with, with diabetes. Uh, despite all of these major, major challenges, there's certainly uh, great hope and signs of progress. There is increasing ART coverage uh, with associated decreasing AIDS deaths. Uh, one of the major strong points is the elimination of mother-to-child transmission. Uh, PrEP is starting to become implemented in some countries. And really, one of the most important, really, uh, is this uh, really acceptance and really decriminalization of homosexual sex. This was first happened in Belize uh, and then in Trinidad and Tobago. And you can see uh, over here the church really playing into this. It says, stop using religion to justify hate. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's not decriminalization of homosexual sex within uh, Jamaica. Um, really, uh, there has been some progress, though, I would say. So I've been... Uh, working and living there for seven years, but I've going, been going there many years before uh, my wife is Jamaican. And you know, just last year, there was a big billboard uh, with the LGBTQ flag um, that I don't think you would have ever seen that uh, 10 years ago. So I think although it is very, very small, smaller than we'd like to see, there is uh, progress. So um, I will be, again, Jamaican-centric. I don't think there's anyone else from the Caribbean, so I can get away with it. But um, these are really um, important people within Jamaica, but also uh, within the Caribbean. Peter Figueroa was at the Ministry of Health for a number of years. Uh, he was the chief medical officer. He's now at the University of West Indies, a professor. He's also a consultant for the WHO. 
Celia Christie Samuels. She's a professor of pediatrics, uh, consultant pediatrician, really done a, a lot of work with mother to child transmission. Um, and we've also began uh, working on uh, vertical transmission of arboviruses in a project together. Uh, Jeff Barrow, he has uh, done all of the resistance work uh, within Jamaica. He's a clinician um, at the clinic that sees about 1,200 patients, HIV positive patients, uh, at the university per year. And I will stop. This is um, in the north coast of um, Jamaica. And I have been in discussion with the university about relocating my office <laughs> to any one of these, lot, any one of these villas. I, it shows that I'm really reasonable. I'm not picking one in particular. I will take any one. But thus far, I have been unsuccessful. I'm sad to report. Uh, but I will keep working on it. And if I do, uh, I would love to see you all come by my office for a rum and a swim. <laughs>